Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. And today's show is going to be featuring Jerome Martin. We'll be talking about multidimensional coaching, CE5 facilitation, plus training in metaphysical science and regenerative detoxification. The Dare to Dream show won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. Apple Podcasts lists us as top ranking under self-improvement and nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. If you want to take a class or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com. I'm Debbie Ta- Dashinger. I am a media visibility expert, and that takes several forms. The first is I am a book writing coach. I do two Zooms a month with people from all over the world, live coaching, so you get your book done. And I will tell you, it is a great honor for me to lead this class. I'm humbled by who shows up, and wherever they start, they are becoming such magnificent writers, all of them. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And finally, I've got a class that shows you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. You can sign up for my free gift so you can learn how to start these things and become way more visible right now. Go to debbie slash gift, my gift to you. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. My guest today, Jerome Martin, assists awakening starseeds who wish to establish open communication with their galactic families. Jerome facilitates direct contact experiences with ETs of the light who assist you in remembering your purpose in this lifetime and accelerating the development of psychic abilities to equip you to serve at your highest potential. Jerome works closely with the Arcturians who have awakened his dormant ability to operate interdimensional light ship technology and have charged him with facilitating CE5 experiences to usher in a new era of spiritual development. Jerome instructs others on how to access and operate this technology, working in unison with higher dimensional beings to create life-changing shifts in yourself and the world around you. For more information, go to projectstarborn.com. And a little bit later in the show notes, we are going to mention the Conscious Life Expo. And if you want tickets to the Conscious Life Expo to hear Jerome speak or to see me leading the ET Origins panel, and he is one of the panelists on that, you'll see the way to get the tickets. There's over 15,000 people of our tribe, our spiritual beings, light workers who show up there every year. Please don't miss it. It's phenomenal. And with that, I welcome the amazing Jerome Martin to Dare to Dream. Just unmute yourself and say hello to everybody. Jerome, so excited to have you here. Hi, Debbie. Hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here as well. It's it's a blessing. It's like, I feel like we booked you so long ago and it's like, finally the day is here, right? Rump, rump, rump. Yeah, super excited. <laughs> I've been yeah, waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've gotten to know your work. So I feel somewhat schooled at some of the, you know, advanced things. And, you know, I'll just say this because it's popping for me. I just did a testimonial for you, for your work. And, and that's really how I would describe what you do, Jerome, is it is now. It is the stuff that's needed right now. Forget about new age, right? It's now age. It's happening. We're in it. So can you share a little bit about the things you offer to people who come to work with you that facilitates us being here now and having the teams we need and all the great stuff you provide? 
Absolutely. Um, so I provide a myriad of services and training and things like that. Um, the training developed later, it started off with me just being able to um, connect to people and take them up into these light ships um, where I connect to your consciousness and I bring you up into these interdimensional light ships um, where not only the Arcturians, but different, um, different members of your galactic family, um, you get to interact with them and they telepathically teach you um, not only about yourself, a lot of times they give you your purpose, but then they deliver tools to you to help you serve your purpose. So um, it's a really awesome experience because you get to experience um, multidimensionality, but you also get to experience telepathy, you know, with beings of higher consciousness. And it's, it's such an amazing experience. And that's how this started. It started happening for me. And then after a while of working with them, they're like, well, you can do it now too. And so I started being able to take other people up in the light ships and I was doing that for a while. And then it morphed into um, now you can train other people on how to do what you do. And so they sort of showed me how I could reverse engineer and then train people. And that's why I call myself an applied metaphysics instructor because I teach metaphysical science. And then it's more like a personal trainer. I take you through experiences that help you build the faculties in that way you can do it on your own. And I there's a bunch of other services for individually, but that's sort of the gist of, of what I've been doing. What do you call, you call it metaphysical sciences? What is metaphysical science? So traditionally, the metaphysical science is the study of the nature of reality. And if people don't really know what that is, um, everyone's heard of astrology and how the planets and the stars, the energy affects our consciousness. That's like the most basic form to help you understand, you know, how we're programmed by these energies. Um, but metaphysical science at its root is tapping into altered states of consciousness. And so the so what people know, or if I told you these things, you'd be like, oh, that's what metaphysical science is. Metaphysical science is um, meditation, um, self-hypnosis, affirmation, prayer treatment. Those are the four core cornerstones of metaphysical science. And then you can use those to alter your states of consciousness so then you can interact with higher dimensional states. Um, a lot of people have a hard time meditating or I, I can't do this, I can't, I can't visualize. Well, yeah, because none of those things um, you can do until you access altered states of consciousness. And when I say that, people are like, well, what is that? Um, altered states of consciousness is being able to at will shift your brain waves from beta, which is where if we're having an engaged conversation, we're in the beta range of brain waves, being able to shift from beta into alpha through theta into gamma and being able to hold that range of brain waves while you're doing these operations. So all of the psychic abilities, whether you're doing, you know, remote viewing or Akashic records or healing or any of the stuff that I do all operates in a high frequency or it's, it's a lower band, but in a certain brainwave state. And so you have to be able to access that and hold that in order to engage in these operations. Mm -mm. Okay. And quantum perspectives and quantum physics, the understanding of entanglement and super position, non-locality, all of that, it can be really challenging to the conventional ideas of reality. Are there ways, Jerome, to bridge the gap between quantum physics and metaphysical science to find the connections to understanding the universe? Yes. And so um, the best way I can describe it is the metaphysical science, though it's mostly taught as principle, um, and that's why I teach applied metaphysics is like, this is how you actually do it. Um, the metaphysical science, when you apply it is this is the way that these happen. And the quantum physics is more of the science behind it. And there's a bunch of other different, um, they call it, um, it's morphogenetic field science and different. There's a bunch of other um, high tech names for it, but that's more of like the study of it and how it works. And so that's like the background of it versus this is how we actually use it. And so it's, you know, um, the difference between like knowing about a thing versus applying it and the gap between them is just understanding them. I mean, quantum, um, quantum physics talks about entanglement, but in, in metaphysical science, I just entangle to you. And it's less about how it works versus we just do it. It's more of like telling time versus how the clock is built. Good explanation. Thank you. And I am so curious since you responded to your first question and how you described it. And you said they were working with me. So can we go there? Can you talk yeah. about, have you had direct extraterrestrial experience, close encounters, direct encounters? What has that been for you? Yes. So um, I started having um, close encounters um, in 2017. Um, my life completely changed from there. I was a construction worker and I was building landfills, traveling across the United States, um, just were operating heavy equipment, digging big holes. 
And I would take naps and on my lunch break, just in my truck. Um, and I thought it started off as weird dreams because they started contacting me first in dream state. And then through meditation, it would just started happening. And then eventually I could go on my own. So it was unconscious. And then sort of, I'm aware of it, then I could do it myself. And these dreams, how they started happening was I would be in my truck sleeping. And then the dream would start as though I'm in my truck. And then these blue beings, um, at the time, I didn't see them how I see you, you know, um, later they developed into seeing them as ETs. I feel like they came to me as just silhouettes of light because I might've been scared if I thought there was something else because I didn't understand at the time. But in these dreams, they would circle around my truck and sometimes they were like standing through it. So they were like, you know, just phasing through matter and they would like put their hands on me and I would hear wub, 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 wub. And then I'd be like going up this like tube of light, like through space. And I'd see this, like what I thought at the time was a large floating city, um, similar to like that disc behind you, but it looked like, I just like, oh, a city in the sky. I didn't understand. And then I would, I, when I was there, these beings were, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the TV show where it's like American Ninja Warrior Challenge, where they're like, it's like obstacle courses. They had me there and they were like, all right, look it, you're going to learn how to lift yourself up and you got to float yourself from platform to platform. I'm like, okay why and just like just like just do it it's it's a i'm like what a weird game that these blue lights are showing me and so <laughs> I, I started doing that and then and so what's crazy is this started this was happening um sequentially like i'd have one dream where they take me through a, a short part and then i would wake up and I'm like that was weird and then i would have other dreams throughout the week and then i would have another one of these dreams but when this dream, ha when the next of dream happened, it lined up exactly where the other one started or where the other one ended. So it was like, you know, 10 or 15 times. And so after they showed me how to move from platform to platform, then it was like, okay, um, here's a geometric image, like a cube, or, um, you know, it was mostly cubes where they're like, okay, now connect to the cube and lift the cube up. I'm like, okay. So then I had to move the cube across the platforms from one side to the other. Like, okay. And then in another dream, they were like, okay, now you can move yourself and the cube. Now you float and lift the cube too and move yourself and the cube across. I'm like, this is so strange, but, but cool. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. I'm like, weird dreams. And, um, but then after, after that, then they started coming to me during meditation. I would just be meditating and then boom, I'm up on, and now I realized it was a spaceship. Um, it wasn't a city of light. It, now I'm on a spaceship and the beings, um, you know, they had features and they were telling me that they're the Arcturians and that they've been training me through my dream state um, to get me, they were building my light body. They're telling me that they were helping me train and develop my light body to be able to move back and forth consciously. And so them teaching me how to lift myself and then others, they were training me to be able to move myself from the third dimension up into the higher dimensions where this interdimensional technology is. So they brought me there and then they were teaching me, you know, how to communicate with them telepathically. They also taught me that the ship is alive. It's a living light field. It's made of consciousness. And so you connect to the ship and the ship talks to you too. And the ship has all these different rooms um, where they operate all this awesome technology. One of the rooms is like looking glass technology where you go in there and you can ask questions and they just like show you up on the screen, the answers, there's another room where they have med beds and different technologies where you put people in there and then they like quantum healing. It just like shifts and changes um, things in your body real time. Um, there's, there's an Akashic library in there where it's like either books sometimes looks like crystals, but they have all this galactic information for you to sort through. There's rooms where they um, work on you genetically. And when I say that, I know it might sound weird, but they connect to you and they're actually activating your DNA. Um, and so this is, um, one of the places that I brought you where the beings come in there and they tap into you and they show you, you know, about yourself and these are abilities and all this different stuff. They're they're while they're showing you. And you're so it's interesting because they're showing you, but it's like a process of remembering because after you see it, then it turns on in your DNA. And so it, it's a, like a genetic, um, it's like a genetic room where they, they tap in your DNA, they show you who you are and then it comes online. And so that's a couple of the rooms and there's, there's a bunch of other ones, but I could go on for days. And so I'll just, you know, those are the couple that I want to talk about. And so this is going on for some time. And, um, I even I told about this, they thought I was going crazy. And until I was able to start bringing other people, um, you know, when, when, if I talk about it and no one else can experience it, it seems like, well, that's, you know, strange, but when I can now bring other people and that's what they were showing me floating up and grabbing an object and bringing it with, you know, they were teaching me on how to entangle to somebody else and bring them consciously up to the ship as well. And so I didn't realize that they were training me the whole way. Um, and I didn't understand it until I got to a certain point where it all just made sense. And they're like, you can do it now too.
Oh, so for instance, so I've had two sessions with you. So while I was having, and they were two very different experiences. So you were actually facilitating mm -hmm. at the same time. It's not like you were instructing me and sitting back, you know, and waiting that I would report back. You were actually in there with me facilitating the success of all of this to happen for me to go up to the light ship and connect with the beings I did and all of that. Is that correct? It is correct. And and that's why, you know, I talk about applied metaphysics, um, applied metaphysics instructor is because all of these things, um, you know, it just takes guidance on this is how it works. And so when I facilitate it, um, you know, the, the, the light ship is a, um, it's a, it's a consciousness light field, right? So it's a ship, but it's an extension of, of myself. And everybody has one at a certain point when their energy accretes to a certain, a certain amount, everyone has, everyone's capable of this. But so this ship is a part of my consciousness. And mm -hmm. when I bring you up in there, I'm bringing you into a, into a interdimensional container that is made of my energy. And so the beings that are then inside, once we're inside that space, it's a collective field. So the beings that are in there are a part of me, but they're also a part of you and the space allows us to work as a collective. And so when we go in there, um, and this is super interesting too, I, I always wondered like, why, why me? Like, I'm just a human. Why are they bringing me up into these ships and why am I part of this? And it wasn't until I started doing this with clients for a while that a couple of people noticed, they're like, when we're up there and I look at you, like you look just like them. And I was like, oh, right. I get it. So, so the actor, like, so uh, I'm an Arcturian star seed. So I, I'm, I have this human meat suit, but my consciousness when we're in higher dimensions looks like them because I'm, I'm one of them. So they were just teaching one of, to them, they were looking at one of them, not a human. Human. And so, right. But like when we're, when we're up there and how I facilitate it is I connect you with them and I instruct on, this is how this works. And it's, it's the quantum entanglement. So the entanglement allows the telepathy to happen. And so as it's happening too, they might be showing you things, but like some of it is some of it, it's a lot at once. It's like a giant download where you're just like seeing these visions or images. And my job is while they're showing you, my higher self is connected to yours and theirs. And if you're not getting all the information, how they want you to understand it, they have me prompt and ask other questions to deliver the message fully. That way the tool or the instruction is integrated. Otherwise, if you just saw a thing, you might not know how to take that away and apply it in your life on your mission. And so there's a bunch of facets of it, but that's you know the main reason why um, you know there needs to be a facilitator because otherwise you can be flying blind and not understand what's going on. Oh my goodness. So here you are a construction worker. I love yeah. these stories, right? And you can't, you, you can't write them like this because it's so, it makes it even more perfect. It's not like you grew up dreaming of UFOs. You're a construction worker. You had your life, you're da, la, la, going along. And all of a sudden you start taking your naps in your truck and you think you're having these weird dreams, but as they continue, it manifests into something way grander. Was that a weird transition for you to go from regular construction guy to like UFO, um, major spaceship facilitator guy, like to open up to all of this? Was there a transition or did you just click in there? So there was a transition period. Um, the first thing that they showed me um, was all like how to operate it and stuff like that. And what's interesting is that there's actually an overlay that I didn't put together for a long time. And I was like, how do I operate these high tech light ships? But then I realized like, oh, I was a heavy equipment operator. So I was already using my consciousness to operate something outside of myself that was like an extension That's that was so my physical body. So when you're in an excavator, you have little joysticks and you're, you're moving the joysticks, but the machine is moving. So you're actually using your consciousness to move a thing that isn't, isn't you, it's outside of yourself. Um, and the light ship is you and it's part of you, but it's the same type of thing where where you're operating it with your consciousness. And so I just, I think the whole path was like training up for this moment, because if I didn't, if I wasn't able to understand that concept, it would be even more hard to understand it on a metaphysical level. Yeah. The Octarians, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Lyrans, the Andromedans, are they all your family or have they all contacted you at some point? Yes. Um, so all of them. Okay. So 
the, the second thing that we did together was we did a DNA activation. And in that activation, um, your DNA strands are each connected to a different star system. And based on your genetic profile, you have connections to all these different star systems. Um, believe it or not, um, people talk about past lives or parallel realities where actually um, there is no past or present or future. There's just now, now, now. And so everything's actually happening simultaneously. So those other realities, you actually um, exist in 1,728 simultaneous realities. And so um, the other those beings that are working with you in the light ship are actually yourself. There are other versions of you that are coming transdimensional through time and space. And so you're actually learning from yourself and that's how the integration happens. You're teaching you. And so this isn't a thing that's outside of you, even though it might seem that way. And these beings come and they can work with you where they feel like they're, you know, completely separate, but they're actually part of yourself. And so the reason why that's important is when you're up on these ships, sure, it was the Arcturians that taught me this technology, right? So that came through through them. But when you're on the ship, it's not just the Arcturians. When we go into these into these rooms and work with these beings, it might be Pleiadians, Andromedans, Syrians, there's Mantis beings, there's all sorts of different beings. And the beings that come and work with you are specifically the ones that you incarnate as. So your DNA is connected to these beings. And so um, it's it's a myriad and a whole collective field of these versions of yourself. And on these higher levels, your soul, you know, we're experiencing um, our incarnational um, memories, but then you have you have your soul, your oversoul, um, your, your, like your Maharic, your Rishik level. And so in these higher spaces, these collectives, it's all you, it's all you too, right? And so you're learning from yourself. And so, you know, as much as it might seem like it's external, which on one level, it is because we're in duality, but in a unified field, it's all part of yourself and it all comes within. And that's why it's different um, than most things. Mm, my gosh. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, and when I had my, I think it was the first experience I had with you where I met the beings, what I really was grateful for is that there was a, a level of letting go because I think it's really easy to get in your head about this and go, well, I must be, I'm a healer. I must be a Pleiadian I, or I must be a mantis being, or I'm a this, or I must be that. Right. <clears throat> and I actually had zero preconceived notions. And some of what showed up was really interesting. I would have never dreamed of it. So it's really interesting to hear you talk about, oh, those are actually your incarnations, those are your aspects of you, you know, your, your family. Uh, so cool because y anybody who knows about galactic uh, records or Akashic records understands they don't just exist here on the earth, right? It is galactic. It is, you know, all the places and spaces you've been and and not all of us have even been physical. Sometimes we've been energy. Sometimes we've been an, an amoeba. Sometimes we've been a cloud. I mean, literally, right? These are all living energies. And so it's fascinating just to consider all the things we're doing as these growing oversoul aspects of our oversoul being. <clears throat> so big transition for you, I can imagine. And also concurrently, you're like a sports guy, right? You you do some kind of martial arts. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so I have I was never really big in like um, organized or team sports. Um, growing up, I skateboarded. Um, and then I've been into martial arts um, for, you know, since I was 10 years old. Um, I'm a black belt in Hapkido. I'm actually going to be getting my my second degree black belt pretty soon. I'm a, I'm a licensed instructor. I just don't teach um my first business was a martial arts school, but I don't teach regularly, um, but I enjoy it. And it's, you know, it, that's actually how my spiritual path started because um, the martial art that I, that I practice is Hapkido, which means the way of neutralizing energy. And so sure, there's a lot of, there's a lot of body mechanics and pressure points and stuff, but learning how to breathe and use um, the flow of energy to redirect um, someone's aggression or attacks um, that got me into learning, you know, you're, you're, you're breathing and you're putting energy in certain spots to cause an effect 
Well, I started learning that way. And then one of my teachers was like, well, look, you can also use your energy to, to heal after, you know, certain things you can, you can help people with the energy. And that's, I started, I went from there, then I got into Reiki and then Reiki turned into, you know, working with um, different um, angelic guides for a little bit. And then I sort of put a pause to it because I like that was happening. And then I went back to the mundane world, started doing construction and all these different things. And, you know, I just sort of like let it go for a while. And then my consciousness was just not having at a certain point. They're like, they like shook me awake. They're like, Hey, like your mission, like you were start, you started, you started along the way and you're working through earth school. And like, you, you didn't you, like, you're about your, it, it's like giving up before graduation. Like you're about to graduate. And then you just, you just like, didn't show up to graduation. And the Arcturians started coming in because they're like, Hey, you made it from earth school. Like it's gal your galactic level. Now time to start, you know, doing this because the, the population as a whole, they're doing the same thing. Everyone's waking up up and they're you know um we're here on earth and this is earth school we've always karmic lessons to learn all this stuff in duality but we're on the cusp of shifting into those higher dimensions and we're at the level where you know um the government's telling everybody like ufos all these different stuff like this is like disclosures happening and so you know when this started for me everyone thought like et's like you're crazy but now that it's being disclosed like wow this is actually a thing and people are are like they're interested more and it's more um where people are searching for it. And so, you know, as that happened, they were preparing me and getting me ready for like, Hey, this is coming. Like we need, we need way showers to help people, you know, um, connect and like the, it's time for this galactic level of, of schooling um, of Ascension for humanity. And so they sort of shook me awake and like, Hey, you fell asleep, wake up, get back. to work. <laughs> Wow. Literally you did fall asleep, but good things are happening while you were asleep. Oh my yeah. gosh. Amazing. What a story that is. <clears throat> so you mentioned uh, spiritual multidimensionality. What mm -hmm. is that? Okay, so um, most people are only experiencing their third dimensional body, right? So you're seeing out of your eyes and you're just seeing life for what it is. And we're stuck in duality, right? So the third dimension is duality, but what people don't understand, well, so this is a funny thing too. People are like, well, where are the dimensions? Are they some far off place in the universe? No, they're actually like, we are, we're the zero point and all of them are existing around us. Um, and in, in the in the free course that I have for everybody, I go through this and I explain it. And you'll see a diagram that shows your multidimensional anatomy because there's actually um we have um so everyone everyone knows about the seven chakras that are connected to your kundalini energy and if you've seen a diagram where it shows it looks like an onion where you have the, the different the different levels the chakras turn into like an aura um but you actually have more than that there's there's 15 dimensions in the in the 15 dimensional time matrix and so each dimension is stationed it's connected to a chakra but it comes around you like an onion and so the way i talk about it when i teach it is if you've ever seen a russian stacking doll how all the dolls are on are outside of each other and so we're stuck in this one and we haven't experienced the other ones and once we learn how to shift from duality polarity into unity we start being able to access we go from third dimension to fifth dimension and all of these other things happen once that happens and the biggest thing that mm -hmm. stops us from accessing all these um, higher dimensions is our karma and our traumas right so and this is where we start talking about shadow work and this is one of the things that we had to do when we when we first started everyone has experienced traumas um growing up and a lot of people say like well i know what my traumas are like actually you don't because the things that are actually holding you back they're repressed um it's like a zip file where the images are condensed and zipped away because at the age when that happened we are not emotionally intelligent or uh, developed in order to process adult situations so it gets locked away for hopefully someday when we can process these things and then integrate them. And so um, that's like the um, the chains that keep us in the third dimension. And after we break those chains, we get access. And that's when I start talking about the difference between single vector consciousness and multi vector consciousness. Single vector is when we're looking out of our eyes, right? This is what you see is what you get. And then multi vector consciousness is when we can start engaging in these higher dimensional things. Like, sure, you're actually in your physical body, but when you close your eyes, you can station your consciousness in another point in time and space. Remote viewing is a good is, is a good way to explain that because you're literally seeing or experiencing something else that's outside of you. And you can actually, and what, why it's called multi vector is it's not just two; it can be ten. I mean, we can go up on a light ship where we're we're conscious of our bodies here, and then we're on a light ship, but then there's 
there's another being and this is happening information streams there's all these things happening simultaneously and so um, when we talk about multi-dimensional there's these different layers but there's also different access points and learning how to access the multi-vectors is part of the magic mm-hmm. that is so magic and that was um, such clear explanation i really appreciate that about density and also these different dimensions of where we reside um yeah and this stuff can be so confusing i know and i recently heard a really good i think somebody said it on my show just to, so you'll have to listen to the show to hear but it's a great explanation of all the different aspects because now you've mentioned a number and i want to go back to that 1728 realities dear god unravel that how do you know that jerome Okay, so um, I actually read about it from from somebody that has broken down consciousness, but it also makes sense because everything's in twelves when it comes to you have you have you have twelve DNA strands, and so in your identity matrix, there's you have twelve twelve incarnate incarnate identities, and then the next level up is the soul identity, and then you have twelve sets of twelve, and the next one is twelve times twelve times twelve, and so as it goes up, it it expands by twelve, and if you take all of them from the Rishik level down to the Maharic level or down to the Oversoul soul and incarnate if you add them all up it adds up to 1728 and so uh, and the beings that you're experiencing in the light ships are are some of those other identities because we're we're when we go up in the light ship we're going up into the maharic level of consciousness and that that shield is the ship and all of the beings from lower and down get to um you get to experience them as a collective there and that's how we have access to them okay And I know in your bio, you talk about uh, CE5 facilitation, which is so cool. I have done Dr. Stephen Greer's CE5, I don't know, modality, I guess you'd call it. It's an app, really. Um, What is your CE5 usage for establishing contact? I'd love to know. And then when you come out to California, maybe we could do it together. Well, so the, the CE5 was the experience that we had when I took you up in the light ship and you communicate with the ETs. So close encounters mm-hmm. of, the fifth is of the, okay, so close encounters of the first kind is seeing a ship in the sky or seeing something that, you know, you, oh my God, I saw a light or a UFO. See, um, close encounters of the second kind is that you see a ship and then there's some sort of radio distortion or something that affected you too. CE5 is then like seeing an extraterrestrial like physically. Um, uh, Close Encounters of the fourth kind is um, being like abducted or aboard a ship. And then CE5 is being on a ship and also having direct open communication, which is usually telepathic, where you're, um, it typically happens in a in a benevolent way, because a lot of times when people are afraid, they shut off, they don't, they don't want to, but CE5 is where you're having direct open communication. So when you experience these beings, you're having open direct communication telepathically with those beings. And not only is there communication, but they're upgrading and they're working on your field and they're doing all these amazing things. And so that's, that's what CE5 is, is the direct experience with these beings. So cool. And that's actually so funny. I'm so used to in my world, anytime here, somebody says CE5, even though, of course, I understand uh, what you're talking about. But for me, it's always Dr. Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, right? (laughs) Going out to Joshua Tree at midnight and sitting in the dark against the mountains where there is spacecraft activity and doing CE5 work. Um, But That's just the name of his app. It is true. It's very true what you're saying. So I understand better how you facilitate that. Have you ever had anybody that worked with you, Jerome, who had like a crazy experience, like the most astounding, amazing one that you've witnessed somebody experience yet? Yes. Um, so one of the first ones that I ever did when I first started doing this, my action, my process actually changed um, because of this experience. When I first started facilitating this, um, a friend of mine, um, well, it was it was a friend of an ex-partner. Um, they were in town and I was telling them, like, I can bring people up into spaceships. He's like, I don't believe in ETs. I'm like, OK, but you're you not believing in a thing doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's like saying I don't believe in trains. Well, Choo, choo, choo. There it is. You know, like it's like you're not believing it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And so he's like, well, I'm willing to I'm willing to try it. You know, I don't believe in it. Um, 
I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to take you through this process. We had to do the shadow work first. And then when I brought them up into the light ship, you know, we're going through the, through the portal. And when we get there, so now when I facilitate, we go into, there's like a receiving area, right? And then we go into the place and then the beings come in before they would just be there when you show up. And he's like, I don't believe in that. And so when we get there, he's like, uh, like we're having this experience. And he's like, ha ah, ah, ha, cause he's like, not, he didn't think that he was going to, you know, um, see these beings. And because he started panicking, he was like, ha ah, ah. ha. And then the beings sort of like grabbed him with their energy and they like floated him up. And when they floated him up, um, like they disconnected him from his body. And so like, he's, he's there with me. Um, and now I do it over, you know, zoom, but we are physically in person and he's like, ha ah, ah. ha. And then you hear, mm where he just like is passed out and he's snoring on, on the floor and then they take him into the room and they put him in the med bed and they're working on him and all this different stuff. And then the girlfriend then comes back in and he's snoring on the floor and she's like, you know, like what happened? And I was like, Oh, like, you know, he was a little bit scared. So the ETs, they, they knocked him out and took him. She's like, what do you mean? They knocked him out and took him. I'm like, well, no, like, like it's fine. You know, they're just, they're working on his energy. And then um, while I'm explaining to her, he like jumps up and says, something. he's like, Oh my God, that was so amazing. I can't believe all the stuff that I, that I was experiencing. And she's like, what are you talking about? You're just snoring. He's like, yeah, I was snoring. I, like, I don't know, but I was up there and he was consciously aware of what was happening in the higher dimensions, but his physical body was put out because of the, the fear that he was feeling when he first started. And so that was one of the, one of the, um, you know, most memorable experiences. And my, the guides showed me to, to change it a little bit. And also to, um, you know, the people that are coming for this, they are wanting to, you know, have these experiences with these ETs. He was open to it, but not necessarily believing in it. So that was sort of like a shock and awe. And so, you know, I've sort of put in, um, different safeguards in place to avoid things like that. Mm. What, what is he like now? I mean, that's pretty big for somebody who's a non-believer to have that level of experience. Is he changed around this whole subject? Yes. So lots of things have changed in him. Um, but one of the most important things, um, and I keep talking about this, is the shadow work. Before you can go and work in these higher dimensions, you have to go through the shadow work process because when you're holding on to... So what, these these things that you experience, it's not as much what you experienced, but the emotional charge that is connected to it that we save in our cells and our body. And so those emotional charges keep us locked in this density. So we have these low, everyone thinks like, you got to raise your vibration. Actually, vi the more you vibrate, the more dense you are. When you oscillate, that's when you're less dense. So when you're going to higher dimensions, you're oscillating at a higher rate. And so we're stuck here because of our vibration. And so, and it's because we're holding these, these dense energies on our bodies. And so the shadow work, it, it it integrates it it frees up and integrates that emotional energy so that you can then raise to the higher planes and these higher vibrational beings they won't um they won't give you access and the reason is that when you are experiencing when you are holding trauma your whole experience you live through the lens of that trauma the partners you pick the things that you do the things that you're afraid of are all based on your traumas and so operating through that through that that dirty lens of of your trauma that's not a that's not really even allowed in the higher dimensions because when you're in these higher dimensions what you're experiencing and what's that's like manifesting real time and so if you're looking through a dirty lens like it's it doesn't work and so um you have to clean that up first at which then brings your oscillation higher for you even to access these places so yeah um going through the shadow work he he was he told me he's like i don't remember my childhood i can't remember anything from since i was 15 and younger. And so all these things that got brought up, he now remembers all of that. And then, you know, the beings taught him things, helped him heal from, um, you know, a couple things that he had going on with his body and also, you know, showed him his purpose. And so, yeah, he's, he's uh, very much changed. That is like ginormous. <laughs> I mean, first of all, for non-believer, but second of all, for anybody having that experience, that is a lot of big ticket items to accomplish in so short a time boy was his soul ready so a friend, a friend of mine um he calls me the shock shop he's like you literally like you like uh, like some of these experiences are so you know a lot of people aren't ready for these type of multi-dimensional experiences not that they're not ready but they just haven't had them before so it's like a you know it's like being shook and awake or it's like a thing that you you know most people are like i can't visualize or i've never been able to do that and next thing you know you're having full-blown telepathic communication where all this stuff's happening and it sort of shocks you awake and so you know that was what what happened to him as well shock shop love it <laughs> um you talked about the med bed mm-hmm 
So what? So I know what a med bed is, but how is that for people having this experience? Talk about that a little bit. So similarly to how I brought you up into, into the ship and we worked with um, the beings that activated the certain things and showed you those things, that, that's one of the one of the rooms that we can work in. There's another room in there um, that is like, uh, it's it's the med bed room, but it's it's more like a, like a medical medical room. And when you go in there, um, the beds, they vary, but they typically, it looks like, um, like an egg-shaped tanning bed and the top lifts off. And so the person goes inside that bed and then it goes on, the top goes on and then a screen will pop up above them where it's like a viewing screen. And then these um, different um, beings from your healing team come in, you know, a lot of times it's, it's the Pleiadians, but oftentimes it's also mantis beings or um, the Arcturians, depending on your lineage or really what needs to happen. Right. So they come in based on, based on need. And so these beings will come in and then they surround you and they start working on you. And as they're working on you, they might be using different light tools or energy fields and, as it's interesting, as they're working on you, they're showing you on the screen what it is that they're doing. So they first will pull up like um, th they literally connect to your to your genetic memory, which pulls up your um, your genetic blueprint of of your body. And it's connected with your higher self. So it shows you like what you have going on. So they first scan your body and they show you like, OK, your spine is doing this or, oh, you have this thing going on or or sometimes they just show you energetic blobs because believe it or not, um, Things that are are going on with us are not even physically related. They're emotional, and then they manifest as physical, right? Because everything starts off as dis-ease, and then it turns into disease over time. And so a lot of times they'll show you which emotional energies are in your organs that are holding that frequency that then manifests that disease. And they'll go in, and they just they release and shift those emotions, and then the thing just literally real time will will go away. Um, and a, an example of this was during COVID, a friend of mine called me and he's like, hey, um, my girlfriend's dad, um, he has COVID and he is in the hospital and they say that he probably has less than 24 hours to live because um, he has pneumonia and he only has like 17% lung capacity. And there he's got, he's on, there, he's on like a respirator and they're like, you know, we don't think he's going to make it. And he called me and he's like, can you do can you do the healing on them? I'm like, I don't know, because typically you have to be present. You have to participate. And we go through a session. I, I like, I've, I haven't, I haven't done it yet like that, where the person isn't able to do that. And so I asked my higher self, can I do it? And my higher self said, yeah. And I was like, well, how they're like, bring your friend and then we'll call in the higher self. So I brought him on the ship and then I called in the higher self of the um of this man who showed up and and that's where the free will still has st still takes place certain people they have you know um their disease or their sickness um a lot of people they need to experience that because of their karma like they're meant to have it so if somebody is um they want it or certain people they benefit from being sick they get a, they get a paycheck or they get um you know th their loved ones take care of them or they get so there's a certain thing that they get from it so they're unwilling to actually heal and so you can't use this higher dimensional technology on anybody that will break their will, right? It comes from a unified space. And if they're, if they don't want this to happen at a soul higher self level, you can't do it anyways. So we went up there, I, we called in, he showed up, put him in the med bed, everything's quantum. And so, I mean, the, the hologram that came up, that's still connected to him. So we put that in the med bed and then it started scanning him. And it turns out that, um, what was happening with his lungs had nothing to do with COVID or anything like that. It was emotional energy. And it was funny because the person, the friend that was there, the emotional energy was towards him because um, he had been like, it was a conflict with the daughter and it was, it was like resentment and some, and other, there was a few other emotions that he was holding towards this person and the energy had built up and then it manifested as this disease. So we went in and were able to identify what it was, clear it up. And then we re reintegrated the hologram and he's like, oh my God, like, I hope this works. I'm like, yeah, well, we'll see. And he called me three hours later. He's like, you won't believe it. He just like coughed up all this stuff and he is fine now. And they released him later that day. Um, and that's, that's awesome considering that, you know, they said that he's got less than 24 hours to live and, you know, he's not breathing on his own and all of that. And so it's, it's really awesome to understand um, how metaphysics plays a role in healing and disease. And that a lot of disease is emotional energy through created by a trauma that we are unable to process and that some of the things it isn't just like a the bones broken while well, there's there's other things in play and so it's really cool stuff so does regenerative detoxification also have to do with med bed or is that completely separate 
So it's completely separate, but it's supplementary because what happens with, with metaphysical science, okay, so this person brought him up in the med bed and it cleared the energy from the lungs. But so what I'm going to tell you about metaphysical science and how disease manifests is typically, you know, someone will have, you know, um, something in their liver and like, say it's, say it's a tumor or cirrhosis or these different things in their liver. Well, how that manifested was at a certain point in their life, they experienced a trauma, right? And this man, it could have been his, his wife left him. Something happened to where then, um, you know, he got a broken heart, emotional trauma happened. Right. And so every day when he wakes up, he doesn't like how he feels, right? So because you don't like how you feel because of that emotion, you cope. And people cope through drugs, alcohol, food sometimes, um, sex, adrenaline, all these different things. And guess what? All of these things, they are chemicals, right? And they're, they're unnatural chemicals that you're putting in your body. And so what's super interesting is that when you go to cope, you're unconsciously because of the emotion. So each, each organ um, is assigned to an, or each emotion is assigned to an organ. And so based on your organ systems and your emotions, um, you know, whatever, so for him, it was anger and something else if it was for the liver, but experiencing that emotion then because you don't like how it feels you cope when you assign those toxins or when, when you cope you, you're unconsciously assigning those toxins to that organ system and so not only is the emotional so the, the emotions create that lower density spot and you're assigning those toxins and then the toxins accumulate and then they manifest as physical disease and so we can go in and we can clear emotions and clear all these different things but if you don't start um learning how your body works and learning how um, to get your kidneys filtering and removing the metabolic and the um, metals and toxins from the body, then those things can happen again because that energy, it's not only the energy, but the toxins being there now is a, um, it's like a placeholder. It's a placeholder for that emotion to come back and manifest. So not only are we clearing it energetically, but we want to go in the body and clear out the physical um, aspect of it as well. And so um, I teach regenerative detoxification because, I, and this is something I, I talk a, a small amount about on that free video course, but there's ways to prepare your body, not only for healing, but for entering these altered states of consciousness, because, you know, the metals, the toxins, the parasites, all of those things play a role in the, the pain and suffering that we're in. And so getting rid of those really puts us in a state that we're going to stay healthy because uh, there's people that I've worked on where we fix the thing. Six months later, it remanifested because they they we cleared the energies and they saw what's causing it, but they didn't change their actions. So you can remanifest the thing because you're 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 stuck in the cycle. You are causing this on you, and there's nothing that can change that. I mean, we can clear it, but if you don't take the actions to change your course correct, then you're going to remanifest that thing, and that's up to the person because they have free will as well. And so I, I teach them hand in hand because knowing you know, not only how it works energetically, but then physically, you know, where the toxins and metals go and then the mechanism to get them out of the body. It's all, it works hand in hand because we're not only on the fifth dimensional level, but we're also here on the third. And so you have to use all of your tools. Right. And like this man you described who was in the hospital where they thought it was COVID, but you were able to, you know, through a substitute, <clears throat> have this experience up in the, the light ship. Mm -hmm. And you saw that it was emotion for him. Lungs is grief. It's mm -hmm. unexpressed grief mm -hmm. in uh, Eastern medicine. So yep. that makes total sense to me. And yes, uh, liver is anger and so forth. Yep. And I, I have to, I just want to say, I love the way you described earlier where you said the dirty lens of your trauma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that is so apropos. You know, that's exactly correct because we get so stuck in this loop, this repetitive loop in our lives, never meaning to do that, never wanting to do that, but it plays out over and over again. And that's exactly correct. It is this dirty lens we've gotten so accustomed to believing and experiencing that we just think, oh, that's the way it is for me. Or even if we don't want it to be, that is. So it's great you have these tools for getting people out of that using the shadow work and finding the healing tools and the connections. I want to, you have brought up your free class mm -hmm. and I want to ask you about that. I know it's on your website, preparing for multidimensionality, which is so perfect for this conversation. Tell me about the class and where people can get it. Okay. So the class is on my website, which is projectstarborn.com. Um, and 
when you go on the website, it's the first thing right below the banner where you'll see where you can enroll for it. It's a free class. Um, in that class, I the first thing I talk about is the supplements that you should be taking to help your body remove the, the heavy metals, chemical toxins, parasites. And then there's one specifically that helps make your nervous system more conductive, right? So as we are connecting to the higher realms of consciousness, the more conductive we are, the easier it is. The reason why it's so easy for me to connect is because these supplements, I've been taking them for years. And like I like to talk about it from like upgrading from a landline to a satellite phone, as far as the bandwidth and your ability, the quickness to connect. Um, a lot of people are still operating on dial up. And over here we have, um, you know, it's not 5G, but it's 5D, right? And so we're, we're, we're operating on completely different wavelengths. And it's like Wi-Fi, you know, you need to strengthen your Wi-Fi and your ability to connect. And so the removing the metals is one thing, the toxins, um, the parasites, but also increasing your neural conductivity. Believe it or not, your brain and central nervous system is an like organic fiber optic. All it does is send, send and receive light signals. Everything is light signals. And when you communicate with beings in these higher realms, everything is images. Everything's just light. It's just light moving. And so, you know, we're a quantum supercomputer and understanding that it needs to be upgraded to a new operating system, you know, that's part of it. And so I teach that part because that's that like the 3d physical aspect gets you ready for that and it helps you prepare to be able to access these things at a higher rate um and so that's super important that's the first part the second part and and in that course too i, I give a um a links of all of like links to where to get the like the products that i use because they're the ones that i recommend um and then after that in the class i teach about altered states of consciousness, what those are, a few of the things we talked about here with the metaphysical science. Um, and then I go over, you know, um, what you can do once you access your altered state. And then in that training, um, I walk you through a guided meditative experience where I help you anchor in the, the, the energy fields that allow you to access those altered states. And I'm not sure if, if anyone's familiar with NLP, but they're able to anchor in um, certain emotional states. You know, if you want to go up and speak, you can anchor in a, a anchor in a certain energy that you can tap into when you need it. So this is similar to that in the aspect of we're anchoring in brainwave state frequencies. So when we when we do a certain thing, we connect and visualize visualize and this thing happens, it automatically anchors in that brainwave state. So it, it's it's a way to tap into consciousness through a similar technique and technology to where when I do this, boom, I shift my, like I go through this little process and now I'm in theta, I'm in alpha, I'm in gamma. And, and you can just, by doing that, you just bring yourself there and you're able to hold it for as long as you need. And that's the doorway. Once you learn how to shift your brainwaves, then all the other, the rest of it is just easy. Um, and so that's that that's the biggest battle is learning the brain waves. And so in that free course, I show you how to get your body ready and then how to um, access a master shifting the brain waves. That way, um, if you do want to engage me more, you already you have you you come in way ahead of the game. And that's that's what's super important. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Very cool. So project starborn, B O R N dot com. If you'd like that free gift, it sounds amazing to me. I want to ask you you were featured on the show UFO Witness on Discovery Plus. How did they scientifically monitor you and collect data? Okay. So on that show, um, you know, I, I told them, so on the show specifically, it's about black triangles and they're talking about the Arcturians. And, um, I was connected through a friend of mine, which is one of the hosts on the show. And she had seen some of my work and she was like, you got to come on the show. And when I was there, um, I thought I was going to bring someone up into the light ship to meet them. And Ben Hansen was like, no one's going on the light ship. He's like, we want you, we want you to go on the light ship and we want to ask you questions. And then you just tell us what they're, what they're communicating to you. And I was like, okay, like, and I had never done that before. I typically bring people and he's like, can you do that? And I'm just like, yeah, I can do that. He's, he's like, have you done it? I'm like, no, but I, I, I will, you know, I can. He's like, okay. Um, he's like, while you're doing that, do you mind if I have you hooked up to biofeedback equipment? He's like, I want, I want to monitor your heart rate. And I also want to monitor your brain waves. We want to use EEG um, brainwave monitoring technology um, because I'll know He's like, basically, he's like, you know, you're saying you're going up into a spaceship. How, how do I know you're not making this up? He's like, because it sounds far-fetched and, you know, there's lots of people telling stories out there. Um, he's like, so I want to, um, 
I want to monitor your brainwaves because if you're going into a spaceship, something should change. It shouldn't just be, you know, the same. I'm like, okay. He's like, so you're going to go on national TV and let me monitor your brainwaves while you're talking to ETs in your head, pretty much. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. He's like, okay, look. Um, and so um, Ben Hansen, he's an ex FBI Homeland Security. So he's always doing like, they're doing lie detectors or this type he, they're using empirical data to, are you making it up or is this valid? And so um, he's a smart guy. And so he was like, he was like, look, I'm going to take a baseline first. He's like, we're going to hook you up to everything. And then I'm going to ask you questions to where you have to think of the answers. That way we're going to see what your brainwaves do while you're thinking, mm-hmm. right? I mean, when you go up in your spaceship, well, no, you know, are you, are you just think, like, we're asking questions. Are you thinking of the answer? Cause you know a lot about um, ETs and spaceships or, you know, something's happening here. I'm like, all right, let's go. And so, so we did it. And I sort of just narrated as I'm going through the process, you know, I open the portal, I go up through the portal. And when I went through the portal, my heart rate dropped to like 40 and then up to like 110. So like, that was the first, the first thing was my heart rate completely shifted. And then when I'm in the ship, like I said earlier, that it's like looking glass technology. There's a big holographic screen and the beings are there. And I ask questions and they just show me up on the screen, like images or movie clips. You know, I, I, I joke because when we use the screens they're like, and, and they're showing you stuff, it's like, this is the real YouTube. Right. And, uh, and so I, I like to joke about that, but, um, But so he was asking questions and I'm just telling him what I'm seeing. So there is no thinking, right? So he's asking questions and I'm just telling him what I'm seeing up on the screen. And when, when I was done, you know, um, after I was finished, he was looking at the data and he was like, well, I can't explain any of that because, you know, when I was asking you the questions and you're thinking your brainwaves were in 80 and 90 Hertz, right. Which is in the, you know, alpha or it's in in beta and like, you know, there's, there's a little bit of alpha being monitored, but then when, I was in the light ship connected with the beings where he's asking me the questions where I'm looking at the the screens. Um, my brain waves were in like 30 Hertz the whole time. He's like, so your brain waves were two thirds less active the whole time that this was happening. He was like, and so, you know, that's a, like there's empirical data and there's evidence of, of that shift. And so, you know, he was, um, he was pleasantly surprised. And so was uh, Melissa and, and everybody else, because, you know, it, it shows that there's something happening. And this is what I'm talking about. When you're shifting your brain waves, you have to be able to hold that brainwave state in order to engage in these things. And so, you know, um, that's, all this has to happen at at those levels of consciousness. And so learning, if you're interested in this type of stuff, you got to learn how to get your brainwaves there um, because everyone can do this. Um, We're all like all humans have these abilities. Everyone thinks like, oh, they're a psychic, they're a healer, they're this, they're that. Like, no, we're all of that, right? And so just learning how to tap into these energetic fields and, and activating your DNA is how we bring these abilities out. We actually have all of these abilities and more. And if I could do it, I was just a construction worker. If I could do it, so can anybody else. You know, I I, I give myself credit, but I know that there are people that I've trained that can now do this as well. And I have a few people that are taking people in the light ships and they're facilitating this same work. And so, you know, any, anyone, anyone that's interested in it and is called to do this and it, and is here for humanity and here to help the ascension process, um, you know, can, can do this as well. Wow. That's throwing down the gauntlet and we need that. We need that right now. We need the way showers and I love that you have the scientific data. Is the Melissa you were referring to our friend, our now mutual friend, the producer? Yes. Oh, yeah. wow, very cool. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she was. She was the. Um, she's one of the investigative journalists on that show. Hmm, I love it. All these connections. So, did anything happen after UFO Witness on Discovery Plus aired, or has it aired? And meaning, did anyone reach out to you? Did anyone? Did anything happen by virtue of people seeing this? Yeah. And so it wasn't like a bunch of people like banging down the door because they want to talk to ETs. But um, it's interesting that, you know, even recently when I connect with people, it's all through it's it's synchronicity. Like I'll just be in a random place and someone start talking. And then, you know, um, recently one of my coaching clients, I was I was going to an event and I went to the wrong place because I don't operate in the regular time the time fields are, are messed up. I went, I saw, saw the flyer for the event and the flyer that I had was for it where, where it was next week. And I show up to this place and I'm like, Oh, I'm here for the event. And the lady's like, Oh, the drums, the drum circles next door. I'm like, okay. So I'm in there. I'm like playing drums with people for, for 45 minutes and realize that I'm at the wrong event. And then at the end, I'm like, where's the guy? And she's like, what, what are you talking about? I'm just like, Oh, so I'm, I'm just here. And then she's like, well, tell me like, who are you? And I start telling her, you know, what I'm doing, all sorts of stuff. And she's just like, Oh my God, like I just saw you on that show two days ago. And so then she, you know, was like, 
she, she's a she's a healer and a facilitator and so you know after seeing that she we connected and now you know i'm training her and she's well on her way and so it happens it happens through synchronicity where people they see it they've experienced it it's, an, it's another synchronistic thing that um links me to people so it's it's pretty cool Oh my God, that was such a good story. Just I love the idea of you <laughs> playing drums for 45 minutes before you're like, where's the guy I came to see? Yeah, and I, I, to see him. <laughs> I thought I was in the completely wrong place, but it turns out that unknowingly I was in the right place at the right time because I was there to meet her, to connect with her for you know my purpose. And then I made it to the other event and I they we all laughed about it. And it turns out <laughs> like, oh, oh, we know her. And she's part of the community anyway. So it was, it was oh. a cool thing. And that, that's why I just trust the universe because, you know, even though I think I'm wrong, it's, you know, sometimes you're, like you said, right place, wrong time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right guy doing the right thing at the right time, wrong place, but turns out to be the right place. And you got to the other place anyway. Yeah. Wow. So my dear, you're going to be a Conscious Life Expo so excited about that. February 2024, your inaugural, ta -da, everything, speaking, booth, panel, like your big kahuna here. Um, what are you going to be speaking about at Conscious Life Expo? So I'm going to be on the panel with you about the ET origins. And then I'm also going to be teaching a workshop on DNA activation. So the second session that we had together where I walked you through the process mm -hmm. of activating the DNA strands where all of everything starts plugging in and turning on and, you know, you get access to all of those. Um, like, so even though the going on the ET light ship, like that's a very multidimensional experience and you're engaging with these, with these beings, all this other stuff, the DNA activation, in my opinion, is one of the most multidimensional experiences you can have because you're having, there's, there's sometimes kinesthetic response. Sometimes there's like visions, there's like all these things happening, or sometimes you'll see like whole past lives. The first time that this happened for me, I saw a whole past life where I was like swimming under uh, just the craziest stuff. I was like swimming underwater and I was in Atlantis. I was like a fish guy. And then I learned telekinesis because I'm like, Oh, they used to swim faster. And then I come out of that and now I can move stuff with my mind. And just, just like, it, like the experiences are, are insane, but it's just like, it's like this explosion of, um, yourself, your DNA turns on and you start remembering who you are. And so I'm going to be teaching a workshop on that. Um, because we, I do it one-on-one, -on -one, but, um, it can be done for groups of people. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing cool. um, the DNA activation workshop. They're in for such a good time. I just want to express a little gratitude to you, Jerome, because after, you know, during our first session, I was at the inception of getting together my speech for Mexico City. I'm, it's amazing now on this side with you, I'm leaving mm -hmm. in 13 days. So it's here, it's happening. But months ago, when you and I first connected, I had a speech, I was, I kind of didn't have a speech it sucked. I mean, I'm just going to be honest and transparent. It was ghastly. And for somebody like me, who's always on top of things, I was in a very weird space about it only because it is such a new subject for me to come out and own without imposter syndrome. And it was rough, like um, mentally, emotionally, because I actually wanted to cancel. I was like, I can't get up and do this. But at the same time, I was excited and I was clear, the universe is giving me a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. And they're at the same time, they're pointing me to the greater version of myself. Like, I'm meant to do this. I totally understand it. But still, I was in a very uncomfortable position about what I was about to do. And you and I had that first session where I got to meet the various aspects of me, which I didn't realize that's what they were uh -huh. then, but I was just, I was pretty crazy about everybody I got to, it feels weird because I think one was an octopus or something, but, uh -huh. you know, completely sentient and each of these beings, oh, they believed in me so much and I didn't even go into this experience with you wanting that or thinking about that. But I remember Merlin and um, it may have been a Lirin. You know, I have to re-listen to our session together. It was so powerful what they said to me. And whatever happened, it was part of it was what they said. Part of it was a transmission also. And when I came back and I, I finished the session with you and, you know, you're in a super blissed out state, but something happened and I started to click. The wheels came together, right? They were separate before and they came together and this was happening just like a beautiful bicycle. And all of a sudden I understood, oh, 
I know what I need to do. And I, I, everything came online for me and I started to execute slow process. It was a very slow process, but I executed all of the downloads I got exactly what I needed to do to make this work. And I just want to say like, that was a really momentous experience for me that I needed and culminating in last Saturday, I had people, I invited friends over to do my presentation before I go to Mexico city. And then we had a party and, you know, these are anywhere from, you know, somebody brought somebody very beginner, like not even into this stuff. So it was a little bit, oh, la, 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 la. I don't know how they'll receive it, but I'm going to be me. And all the way to people like, this is the conversation, but at different ages and colors and sizes, all these people, it went so beautifully well. And when I was done, because I love community and I love knowing people and letting other people know people, I have a talking stick. So I passed it around so everybody could say, this is my name. And I just wanted them to mention, I, this was the takeaway I got. And this mm -hmm. is what I commit to doing because it's a very, at the end, action-oriented experience. And everybody did that, but they included how they felt so honored to be at my presentation, my inaugural, you know, homey <laughs> presentation, and what it meant to them to hear it. And I am sharing this with you so you understand Jerome Martin, like from that moment where I was pretty much of a mess. I was a yes, but I was a mess. And I didn't know how to get myself out of that pocket. And then we had our session and I came back into my life and it was just, there was this clarity and ease. And then the rest of it was just for me to execute it. Mm -hmm. And it culminated in, in, success. I'm not even there yet in Mexico City, but I feel very, very comfortable about all of all of it. And I just want to I want to thank the beings who met me. Thank you for your extreme generosity and your facilitation in this experience. And you know, hearing the stories you tell, I'm just so moved. Like people can heal people who need don't even they're not even online with you they're in a hospital can heal you know someone like me this is an important project I want to do in other places so it's not a one and done and my deep thank yous appreciation gratitude to you for I, helping I appreciate me. I appreciate those kind words because this is what this is what I do it for I, I I do it because you know I love being able to help people and and there are people like myself and like, and, and you, and we are powerhouses out here. Like we're here to serve our purpose. And like, you need to be on, on your game as best as possible. So getting the tools that help you achieve that is like the highest, you know, the highest, of the high for me. And I want to take a moment now to say thank you to you as well, because your media visibility course that you mentioned that you, um, that is one of your courses, that course has been so amazing and literally has helped me be able to even talk about this better and better. Um, you know, it, it, it was, it's been really hard for me um, for the past several years to even talk about what it is that I do because I didn't know my message because I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this because the work is so vast, but being able to, you know, figure out who I am and, and, and how to talk about it in a way that sums it all up. Um, you know, that has been super powerful for me uh, because I haven't been able to translate that. And so you do such a good job at at teaching people how that process works and how to, you know, connect with, you know, the places where they need to be. And I just want to say thank you for that so much, because without that, I wouldn't be able to even communicate the stuff the way that I do. And so I appreciate you so much too. Yeah. Mutual fan club. And I'm so glad because clearly, and I'm, I know everybody who's listening to you right now, you're a voice that needs to be heard. So, right. This is just going to ripple out. You'll be other places and spaces and folks, I want you to let, I want to let you know that when you want to get tickets for Conscious Life Expo, so you can hear Jerome speak, the ticket link will be in the show notes. Definitely check it out so you can attend. Oh, you'll be so happy. And Jerome, this is the end. This is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? 
So um, currently I do one-on-one -on -one training and I do sessions and all this different stuff, but I'm going to be working on a video course because I'm learning that my bandwidth um, or my bottleneck is actually my time, right? You can only work with so many people um, in a day. And so I'm going to be translating this into video courses and also books. That way, you know, people can meet me at different levels um, wherever, wherever they see fit. And so I want to be able to translate this into something that is a digital version. That way it can be blasted out to, you know, as many people as want to see it versus people that can only fit into, you know, a ever growing schedule. Awesome. Awesome. I hope you're going to make an app. That's what I just heard. <laughs> make an app that guides you. I likely will then. <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. You can find him at projectstarborn.com. You can get his free class, projectstarborn.com. Jerome, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much, Debbie, for having me. Yeah. And we're going to end today's show with this quote from Steve Jobs. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. I urge you to please like this, subscribe, leave a comment. It actually helps me in the show, helps me do the work I do. It helps the algorithms with YouTube. If you're watching us on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, we appreciate so much. Don't just follow, don't just listen and walk away, right? Donate money for a cup of coffee or give me a lo some love because it makes a big difference with all the work I do and to reach way more people, which is my goal. Next week on the show is the amazing Althea Lucretia, an ET contactee who works with a ninth dimensional Pleiadian being. Althea does light language activations and ascension energy updates. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for ascending. Thank you for believing and for doing the good work. Don't just dare to dream, dare to make all your dreams into your reality.